Welcome to Creating from the Heart, the Artistry of Living. Today I have with me Hannah Hammond Hagman. Hammond Hagman. <laughs> Today I have with me Hannah Hagman. Hannah Hammond Hagman. Beautiful. Perfect. And we're going to just chat with her. She is now the executive director of the Chesterton <laughs> Arts Center. So, Hannah, <laughs> Susie, artist that you are, oh, how did this, how did you end up here? Yeah. <laughs> it's a perfect journey. I don't know how it else is. to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I feel like lots of things kind of brought me here. They coalesced. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. It's, been a, it's been a path that's probably been in place and in moving along for, I don't know, 18 years is or so. Is this a dream? It is, you it know? Is. It is. And I if I give myself the chance to kind of sit with it, it totally uh -huh. is. Yeah. I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled to Good. be here now in this position. Yeah. 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 And how, how, tell me 18 years ago, <laughs> what was going on? Yeah. You know, I was the kid that I got an MFA, right. From the school of the art Institute of Chicago. And I was the student that was never going to teach. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we all have those moments where we're like, no, that won't be me. Um, and after graduating, it was an amazing program and an amazing opportunity and, you know, still have really good close connections from that time. Uh -huh. um, but it's a very fast two years where lots of yes. things come at you really quickly. Um, and then after leaving the program, I was fortunate enough to work as a studio assistant for some artists in Chicago, but really needed to, like, get going. <laughs> cool. So I had a studio practice. Um, you know, and was working on that and was working with galleries and exhibiting. And what kinds of things did you do in your Yeah, studio? so I graduated with a master's in photography, but oh. didn't really make photos. So, and that's the reason I chose SCIC, because you could work really interdisciplinary, you know, so I was able to work with all different kinds of folks. Uh -huh. So I'm always at my heart and a mixed media. It's gotcha. a very generic way to say that. Uh -huh. um, sometimes I used photographs and I always worked in multiples anyway. Uh -huh. So series of things or, you know, because I like the, I like the language that happened with repeating uh -huh. forms or pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I still do. Um, <laughs> and then this opportunity came, you know, there's a high school in Chicago that's a, a nonprofit private high school for visual and performing arts. Yes. Chicago Academy for the Arts, right? And so the woman I was... Um, studio assisting for said, Hey, listen, there's this position that's opening up. I really think you should think about it. And I was like, oh, teaching, you know, <laughs> teaching. And so I did, I threw my hat in that ring. Um, and I remember getting an interview and part of that interview process was that you had to present your work to the entire visual arts department mm -hmm. of the school, which was maybe like 40, 50 kids, freshman through senior kids. You presented to the kids. Absolutely. Interesting. Absolutely. And, That's um, not how you would think it would go. No. And it's like, you know, grad school teaches you how to talk about your work, right? Um, and everybody's very polite about it, and you get this, and you get some feedback. Presenting to 40 or 50 young artists, I was barraged with questions and challenges, <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, this. <laughs> now this is the work, right? <laughs> and so I honestly fell in love with them and with that relationship already and so um i was grateful that i got the gig and so i was teaching drawing there's four faculty in the visual arts department mm -hmm. we all had to teach drawing it's a fundamental which is brilliant and then i got to teach sculpture so kids would do their academics in the mornings and then have their studios in the afternoon for three hours straight so it was an intensive in-depth visual arts experience for freshmen through senior aged artists and for you and for me <laughs> and i learned so much did you yeah so much from give them. me one little thing listen they're just like at that age the seeking and the curiosity and the challenging um i remember doing like a mold making demonstration <laughs> and there's a student lucas smithy he'll never forget lucas <laughs> we've been in touch since um but lucas challenged me at every single process point and I remember like, Hannah, you had this moment, right? Where you could feel um, challenged or disrespected, or you could be like, you're right. You're totally right. And it was just like this switch that went off for me. And it's like, this is what we do in teaching. We present what we know. 
right? And if kids can do it a better way, then we welcome that, right? Oh that's how God. it has to be. That's, that's the growth, I think, that happens with teaching. And so Lucas, and I don't know, I mean, if I ever see him again, I will thank him again for it. But really, it was like this pivotal moment, you know, not only oh. in like how to be an educator, but also just kind of like how to listen to your fellow artists and understand and be generous with each other. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Yeah. So then I, in that opportunity, in that moment, I was like, okay, well, this is the way I learned how to do it. And I'm going to show you. And Lucas has a different way and he's going to show you. So I brought him in as like a Dunbar teacher in the moment. Oh and isn't that God. what we should do for each other? Oh, yeah. Sweet. So I, um, I stayed at the Chicago Academy for just, just a little over two years. Because then I moved out west. I found my way to San Francisco. You did? I what, did. What, what, what said, come hither? <laughs> it was maybe more of a running away than a running to, and that's okay. What you know, were you running away I, from? You know, it's like you want some <laughs> geographical cures from things every now and then. And, um, you know, I'm from <laughs> northwest Indiana. I had always kind of wanted to not be in northwest <laughs> Indiana for a little while. So um, some friends were moving, and it was just a chance to kind of, like, do something new. You know? Okay. So San Francisco is a magical, magical place. It's very it different now. I know. Um, but it's a magical city with magical people. And um, I landed a job at an after-school program <laughs> for <laughs> elementary-aged kids with um, visual and performing arts. Yeah. So that was like working a fairy tale. You know. Oh. So the school was at um, was up in Twin Peaks, and you would stand mm -hmm. on the schoolyard. Because you became like a recess for right, so I'm watching kids play on this playground that's up in Twin Peaks that overlooks the entire San Francisco Bay and both bridges. And we after so you, the fog would roll over the playground and down the hill. And I was, I mean, yeah, that was a beautiful thing. And it's um, the program was called Casa. It was called Children's After School Arts, and it's it's exploded since then it's become much larger program serving many more kids um so I'm, a, I'm guessing you believe in art as a yeah. fundamental experience for everyone everyone all ages yes all ages i mean we talk about arts education being transformational for young kids but let's be honest i mean anybody who finds their way to that to art making at any stage of life you know and we are all artists you know, I think that. I think that too. I think that too. And I think that truly, you know, arts education teaches us techniques and processes. Of course it does, right? But more importantly, I think what it leaves us with is critical thinking and problem solving and connecting and, and, and risk taking and risk taking and out of the box. Indeed. And self empowerment and uh -huh. confidence, you know, and as a, a teacher for young children, you see that spark all the time. You walk into a room of like, kids, you know, kindergarten through fourth grade, fifth grade, and you ask them, how many of you are artists? All those hands are going to shoot up. Do you know what I mean? I do. And they all do. And then you start to like work with seventh grade or eighth grade or into high school. And you ask that question and there are fewer hands that shoot up. Right. So you have to kind of think about that pivot for each of those folks. Um, but yeah, I mean, all of the skills that arts teach us are transformational. And it teaches us to be better people, I think. Okay, so, so there you are in San Francisco. Oh my gosh, there I am in San what? Francisco. <laughs> and I was there for a number of years and worked at that program and some other nonprofit um, performing arts and visual arts programs, mostly serving youth um, from across the city. So these are kids from all kinds of backgrounds and places and spaces. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's like at one point I was working five different gigs for different like <laughs> arts nonprofits from um, a performance program that empowered young girls to a, a tutoring program to work with at-risk kids who needed more academic support. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I've always found myself. And then um, met my husband in San Francisco. And where then was he from? He was from Massachusetts. Oh, East! <laughs> so that's where we went next. <laughs> so... Uh, we had an opportunity come up that we could um, live in um, a family house, right, of, that belonged to his family and do some renovations to it. And San Francisco was kind of grinding on us, you know, um, lots uh -huh. of roommates over a number of years and maybe just search for something a little quieter. But um, so, yeah, so then we headed east and we moved to Massachusetts 
and we lived in that tiny little house really in a much more rural place so it was a great shift you know uh-huh. um and then I started working for a small art center in Lexington Massachusetts um first as a teacher uh-huh. in the program as a teaching artist and did like summer camps and you know all that fun stuff and then um became the director of the program there so yeah and I did that for a number of years and then became a mom which is another kind of beautiful creative it, pro- <laughs> yeah yeah and then um moved to a different city in Massachusetts um stayed home I was a mom at home uh-huh. for about 14 months and then that was enough <laughs> <laughs> but I think you know creative processes and practices keep shifting with us as we move through all these things and so I mean, all that is also transferable, right? So in yes. those years, like oh, studio yeah. practice, not so much, let's be right. honest, right? But um, then raising a toddler and starting to make art with your own kid and kind of get to see all of that super personal and up close, all that development, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And still, I mean, the kid's 12 and it's, it's still pretty magical. Um, so yeah, and then I ended up working for a nonprofit that's embedded in a department of planning and development for a small city in Massachusetts called Lowell. And that was such a cool model, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the city had invested um, in the arts as a creative economic developer. Not only that, but like development projects in the Uh city were all based on, um, there's a huge development of an old mill building that was turned into studios for 200 plus artists. And then that building held open studio times, right? And then there was development of similar spaces, like we have art space here regionally, but there was another larger development there called Appleton Mills, which was affordable housing slated for creatives and creative professionals. Again, an old mill building had been converted for this. And so um, the city had invested all this money. um, And so I was responsible for running a year long program and event series. That included small workshops for artists uh-huh. of maybe 20 or 30 folks, all the way up to working with huge community partners um, and stakeholders to do citywide festivals, oh you know, that served tens of thousands of people. Um, so the bandwidth, like uh-huh. the breadth of things I got to do with right. that position. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how did you get... How to come back? Middle Midwest, Midwest. <laughs> That's home, right? So, um, dad was ill, and it was time, you know. And so before that, I knew that there was a clock ticking in a way, and maybe that's why I took off. So yeah, dad wasn't well, and it was time to come home and support family locally. And I wanted him to know my kid. There you go. I really wanted them to know each other. So. Um, my son's Avi, and I think he was three when we moved back to the area. Yeah, so that was it. We landed here. Uh-huh. Um, my husband is a teacher, so he started working for public school system, first as a special educator. Um, yeah, and then I was kind of didn't know what to do back in the region and um, fortunate enough to land at the Lubesnik Center. Yeah. Yeah, and so I started teaching. Uh-huh. Um, Janet Block was the education director uh-huh. at that time, and she hired me on. Um, and so I was teaching in some of the outreach programs mm-hmm. um, and certainly doing some in-house and did their summer camps for a while. And then when Janet moved into the executive position, you know, I was brought in as the education director, which was fantastic, and it was a huge opportunity. And so I was there for about seven years. Seven yeah, years. Seven years. Learned so much, so much about um, interpretive education mm-hmm. around exhibitions, which really is a fabulous opportunity for you. <laughs> I mean, that's like I hadn't been able to do that before, right? Because the organizations and nonprofits that I worked for weren't exhibiting entities. You it's know, interesting. it is interesting, and that's a whole other yeah. way to make that type of work and the ideas around artwork accessible uh-huh. for folks. I mean, that's like sorcery in a way. Right, it's and really it cool. teaches a whole other di- element of yes. being yes. a creative person Indeed. to the kids. Indeed, so you have to like process the information mm-hmm. and then make it, you know, present it in a right. way where it feels relevant to them, mm-hmm. that they have a sense of ownership, right, of what they're right. talking about. Um, and so building those programs for LCA was a real 
joy, a real joy. And when we were in that building and you would have, you know, like 85 kids come in the door and be in the galleries, that was pretty spectacular. I know. And then I know. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, you know, COVID, I don't know. COVID changes us. It does. It's still changing us. Yes. I mean, for better or whatever. Right. So, um, it was just a time things kind of slowed down. We never stopped, never stopped. Creative processes adjusted. And we've all heard the word pivot too many times, Yeah. but, um, cause that's what we do as creatives. We figure out the next way to do it and the next way to do it and the next mm -hmm. way to do it and to keep serving too, you know? Um, cause that's ultimately my positions in the arts have always been to serve other folks, you know, with educations or, you know, education or programming. So yeah, we just figured out other ways to do it. Um, but I, you know, it was a chance to spend more time with my people too. Um, and then when things started to ramp back up again, and it was just, I kind of just spent some time evaluating and figuring out what's next. And I hit pause. <laughs> I hit pause. It's a good idea to it's hit okay. pause. It's okay. I hit pause. And, it's um, not just okay, it's important. It was needed. Yeah. It was just what needed mm -hmm. to happen. So I hit pause and then came here to the Chesterton Art Center um, under Wendy Marciniak, who was, you know, the yes. executive director and became her program director part-time. And it was great. You know, this, this place has been here and served this neighborhood and community forever, forever, Susie. I know over it's, 60 years. That's right. And it's such like a rich, sweet <clears throat> history. Um, and so I was completely charmed from day one and knew that there's this beautiful foundation here and that it was ready to do more. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, and I love growing things. I do. I love growing things and building things and connecting things. And, um, and the Chesterton Art Center is ready. It's ready. I, right. Oh my God. I know. And then Wendy made the decision to retire. Yeah. She needed pause, right? Yeah, she so did. it's fair. Um, she'd worked very hard to right. get things, you know, squared up here. Um, and so I knew that they would be looking for a new executive director. And part of me was like, oh, part of me was like, wait, I'm pausing, but I'm <laughs> pausing. <laughs> um, and then part of me said, Hannah, if you don't try, if you don't try this, this is an opportunity and it's calling you. It was. I wasn't really listening at the time, but you know, there were was. others of us who were thinking about it was very, of course you. it was very sweet. Um, <laughs> that felt really good. Cause yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so I, I put my hat in the ring for that and I find myself here now. Here. I know. You and so are. we're growing, we're growing. We've got new staff, new ideas, new outreach programs, I new am. community partnerships and you know, this little community, this Doonlin community and beyond that's embraced this place for so long is right there with us. And it's really cool. I've got goosebumps. I know, it's really cool. <laughs> it's just really cool from the annual art fair that is back in action after, you know. Right. Um, so we're gearing up for another great summer event that way. You know, we have a new program with our local boys and girls club, which is just oh, tremendous. Yeah. Um, we're looking to partner with other youth serving organizations so that our arts education that happens uh -huh. in this room um, and in the building, we can start doing that beyond right. our walls. Yeah. Because there are folks who, um, so we can build more access to it first and foremost. So we have a, a scholarship program in place now, so people can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there have been folks that have making art here for years. I know. For years. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and there are member artists who have been with us for years. So there's a really rich history of folks that have made this place always happen. And so, you know, we want to honor them. Yes. And, and yeah. And get more of those histories. But the cool thing about, because of the his the length of this place, you know, um, is that there are generational stories. Yeah. Right. So parents who have taken classes here, who now bring their kids to take classes here. And like, uh -huh. I love that. I think that's pretty special. So, so yeah, I mean, there's big plans and big ideas and, you know, some facility makeovers. And you're like a pig and chip. I'm a pig and chip. <laughs> Can we say that? Um, I am, you know, like there are times where I'm like, 
And Ezra, my husband, will say it. He's like, yeah, 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 this was supposed to happen. Do you know what I mean? I do. And so I'm listening. I'm listening Good. to that. Yeah. But yeah, I, you I, said yes. I said yes. And look at this. Susie, I said yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Is uh, there anything that you would like to share oh my gosh. by way of advice no. to somebody who is young who yeah doesn't know i know right first of all be grateful you don't know like it's a beautiful place to be to not know it's okay it's more than okay you know and life finds you life right? finds you and um <laughs> yeah and the journey is long it the never journey ends is long until it ends and there is time <laughs> There is time. I think that lots of folks, and I see this in my 12-year-old, that there's a, a rush. Do you know what I mean? Like well, this thing that you're supposed to have it figured out, you're supposed to know. And there are lots of sectors and places in our life that kind of tell us that we're supposed to like have things figured out by this age. or the And you always think, at least I think as a kid, you think, that grown-up has it all figured out. Right. And I'm thinking, right. uh, could I tell you a little secret? Right. <laughs> I'm well, that's still good. figuring it out. And that's my Lucas Smithy lesson, right? That <laughs> yes. I, it's, it, that's right. the lesson, right? That I can be like, I don't know. And you should, if a kid, that's my lesson too for an arts education. Kids teach me that if they ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I tell them I don't know, but we'll figure it out together, right? Yeah. It's okay to not know, for sure. In fact, it's, that's the adventure. It is. It is. That's the fun. It is. So, yeah, as I, you know, kind of crest the hill to 50, not quite yet, but, you know, it's in my sights. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay not knowing. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so ah, much, thank Hannah you. Hagman. Hammond Hagman. <laughs> Hannah Hag all the Hammond. All the ages. Hagman. All those ages. All the ages. For being with us today, Creating Susan. from the Heart. Thank See you. you next time. Ha <laughs> ha